Hello Sagittarius viewers, today I'm going to be looking into your situation. Um, this could be a past person, someone in the, you know, you just met, somebody that's coming in, to see how the cards play out. Alright, so for the Sagittarius viewers, what is the story? I guess those three wanted to come out. Sagittarius, what is the story? What is the story for the Sagittarius is watching this? Alright, there we go. Looks pretty good. Four of Swords, Seven of Pentacles, Six of Cups. I feel like somebody has regret for letting you go or losing you or whatever that situation was. So it's just kind of talking about that here. Four of Swords and then a Pentacles, Six of Cups, the Sun, Page of Pentacles, Three of Wands, and Eight of Wands. I'm going to turn the light off so you can have that glare. Oh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> for the majority of you, I think this reading is about your person. I mean, for some of you... I think it's about you basically getting back in the game. It's like you had this period of like rest and isolation and, um, you know, you worked hard for something and it just didn't really quite pan out. It could be a relationship that you're working hard for. And the six of cups here, it's like you're nostalgic about something. You're longing for something. And with the sun, you're looking forward. You're moving forward. You're creating something new. And you're getting that passionate, fiery energy back that you lost. You know, this was like pain and disappointment and kind of being in just in this energy where you just, you couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel anymore. And now you're moving forward. So that's for a few of you. I think for the majority of you, though, I think this reading is actually telling you what your person is feeling. Because remember in the last Sag Sagittarius reading I did, I got that there was somebody around you that had, or somebody that was wanting to come back in, at least if they're not already around you. And they had commitment issues and they were wanting to finally commit they were wanting to work on themselves they were wanting to be better than they were in the past so for a lot of you i do think this is probably your person it's like with this four of swords energy they needed to rest and heal and they isolated from for a while they might have isolated or ghosted you they might have isolated from you isolated from everyone you know, um, not that that makes it okay, but, but think back to that situation. If you were ghosted, like, were they, were they going through a lot? Were they, was there a lot of internal tor turmoil that they didn't fully express? Were they doing the same thing that, you know, ghosting other people, not just you? Um, you know, I think their mental state might not have been as, as stable as you thought it was. If that makes sense, I think that they were going through some internal struggles. I think that they've been fighting with themselves for a while because I think that on one hand they do really want love, but on the other hand they're very they're scared of it, you know. So I think that they've kind of had that struggle with themselves for a long time. Um, so yeah, with the Four of Swords, it's like they were isolated. They they might have been going through a lot internally, kind of being at war inside themselves they they just needed to rest to heal and just kind of detach from the world for a little while with the seven of pentacles you know it was something that they were working for like a karmic relationship could have just come to a halt and just ended and they're still processing it um it could also just be things they've worked for in general their entire lives just kind of not panning out for them the way that they thought they would it's like they did all this hard work and it was for nothing. And I almost feel like that kind of contributed to their commitment issues in a way. It's like they're really afraid that they're going to give their everything to, to a situation or to a person and be left with nothing in the end. Like they're just afraid of putting all that effort in. I feel like there's been situations in the past where they've really given their everything because they're very passionate. But uh, in the end, it's like they give everything and, and there's just nothing in and left for them in the end you know what I mean like it just ends up being futile futile so I think that's kind of where their mind was at they're coming out of that energy though there's 
There's a song coming to mind, um, The War by S-Y-M-L. It's, I'm trying to think of the lyrics. It's like, here stands a man at the rock bottom of, uh, oh, what is it? It's like, here stands a man at the bottom of the hole he's dug or something like that. It's basically about, it's like, being at rock bottom, but kind of having done it to yourself, kind of having, having sabotaged your relationships and pushed everyone away and then being left with nobody because you, you, you know, you pushed everyone away. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting from your person, that, that similar energy. It's like, you, you know, you see the seven of pentacles. It's like they, you know, this, this could be career. This could be love. It could be multiple things, but it's like they worked hard and they were patient for something and they tried to see things in the long term and it just like didn't pan out for them and they kind of got in this four of swords energy I think because of it um where they just you know isolated and detached from everybody and just pushed everyone away and I feel like that's just th that disappointment and that pain from the past is where those commitment issues stem from like giving their all to somebody or giving their all to their career or situation and, and ending up <clears throat> having it just not work out for them in the end that's it's kind of showing you where those commitment issues stem from and that you know they they are in more pain than they might let on <clears throat> but again for some of you this is you so if this sounds like you then it could be you and and not your person it could just be telling you to focus on your commitment issues but for the majority of you i think this is describing what your person is going through <clears throat> I also think that in this spread, I think the Seven of Pentacles has two different meanings. I think that they are also like somebody who, who you know, f they want to fight for what they love. It's like their commitment issues kind of, they fight with themselves because it's like they, on a soul level, they, they're strong. They're somebody that fights for what they love. They someone who stands by the people they love. But on a mental level, because of all the pain they've been through, um... They just, there's just fear. There's just, I mean, it's it's just kind of giving you a, a deeper inside look into the the commitment issues that they have, and letting you know that it's it's not not that it's okay, not that it's justified, but that it's not personal. It has it's not really about you. It's just about what they've been through in their lives, and the disappointment and the pain and rejection that they've faced in their lives that has gotten to them them to that point. But um, anyway, with the Seven of Pentacles, I also, I think it has two meanings. I think it is saying, you know, they bled for too many things that didn't pan out. And now they, they kind of went through a phase where they just, they just stopped committing to everything. They just stopped. They just kind of started um, detaching, isolating, ghosting people, um, not committing to anything, not, not wanting to commit to a single thing in their life because they, they were afraid they would lose it. They were afraid that they'd put all this effort and energy and it would go nowhere. But I also think it's saying that their your person is going to get back into this energy. It's like they they had to kind of take a break from that energy because they were just exhausted and they were just they were hurt. And so they did go through this phase where they ghosted people and they isolated and they and they weren't their best selves. But I do think that this is kind of who they are by nature. Is somebody who wants to see things in the long term. Um somebody who wants to put the hard work in, somebody who wants to be patient, who wants to you know, look for the light at the end of the tunnel and focus on the rewards that can come into their lives if they've just, if they focus and concentrate and they put the effort in, you know, they are a fighter. So they're an exhausted fighter. It's like, um, what is it? Chiron, the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Chiron, the wounded warrior, warrior basically is kind of their, that archetype. It's like the wounded warrior. When I, when I channel this group, um, so it's like, yeah, again, I know that sounds contradictory, but it, it kind of, it makes sense that they fight, they're at war with themselves because it's like on a soul level, they love deeply and they want to commit and they want to fight for the people they love and they want that strong family base and they want that true love and they want, they're passionate, they want the success, they want all those things. But then on a mental level, they're just so damaged and so hurt by what life has done to them that it's like those their mind and their soul kind of, their mind, soul, and heart just kind of like contradict each other and they're at war with themselves a lot of the time. With the Six of Cups here though, I feel like 
they're nostalgic, I feel like you... Well, they're healing. They're, they're healing for one thing. And I think they're also starting to finally appreciate and notice your support. Like, if you were there for them in the past and you were kind of consistent with them and you were trying to put yourself out there for them and maybe even help them heal and they just sort of took it for granted and just pushed everyone away, I think that they're they're starting to go through this... this um, I mean, they're going through this healing process, but I think that they're also... I think that they're also in this nostalgic energy where they just... They realize they took you for granted. They realize they messed up with you. They, they're, they're thinking about the past. They're kind of being hard on themselves and thinking about the things that they could have done differently. With the sun, they are looking forward. I think it's this kind of bittersweet energy with the six of cups. I think this is about you, really. You know, them thinking about you, them taking you, them, them appreciating you more. Them thinking about simpler times. Them, you know, wanting to open their hearts finally. Wanting to... It's like this breakthrough that they're going through. They're starting to have this breakdown where it's like all of that just... They had to rest for a while and they it just all came crashing down on them. But they're they're kind of regaining their energy and wanting to get back out there. Get back in the game, basically. It's like they had to take a time out and now they're getting back in the game. Um, with the sun right after the Six of Cups, it's like that nostalgia... And realizing that you were there for them, realizing that you were supportive, that you did really love them and they were just too blind to see it. They were just too scared, too confused to be able to see what was right in front of them. I think that nostalgic energy and just thinking about the times you guys had together, I think that it, it it's going to be emotional for them. But I think it's also going to help them move forward just in general in their life. Like it's going to give them like optimism and hope and it's going to make them want to show a softer side of themselves to the world you know this is this is blessings this is just this warm sunlight golden happy energy this is you know coming into their abilities to their powers this is being optimistic this is you know getting out of this like victim energy and just you know making excuses for themselves and getting into this energy where they they take responsibility where they kind of level up and mature and this is the energy they're getting into now. I think that this phase is pretty much, it's it's over or it's ending right now. I don't think that there's much more. I don't feel that it's going to last much longer. If it, and For some of you, it's probably already over. They're probably already in this sun energy. And with the Page of Pentacles here, I think this is about what they want to create with you. You know, you see her, she's, like, he or she is focusing on this energy. They're really focusing. And I think this is true love. I think they're focusing on their love. They're focusing on you. They're focusing on creating something new with you. They're focusing on being a better person than they were before, being a more committed person than they were before. And I also feel like your person might be competitive. And I'm kind of thinking that maybe they're having, they're, this is like transitioning from a healthier way to fighting for what they want. Because, like, in the past... There's the Seven of Pentacles energy, which is bleeding for what you want. It is working hard for it. But you notice how much more, how much gentler the Page of Pentacles is? Like, this is still, both these characters are focusing their minds on, you know, a dream that they want to achieve. They're focusing on their goals. They're focusing on what they want out of life. They're, they're making their actions clear. They're getting out of that lonely, sad, cold energy and into this, like, happy, motivated, accomplished energy. Um, and that dream, you know, the dream of love is basically, I think, part a big part of what's motivating them to do so. Um, but, yeah, it's like, it's like a transition from how they fight for what they want. You, you know what I mean? Like, this is, these are both about achieving your dreams and your goals and, um, you know, fighting for something, basically. But it's, it's like... With the Page of Pentacles, it's like this just happens more naturally for that person, you know? It's like they just kind of focus and they just use their intuition more and they just let things flow naturally. It's like they just become a... It's like the magician... <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. It's like the magician energy pretty much where it's like they just... They just, they manifest in a much more smooth way than this energy does. But it's this, it's similar energy, you know what I mean? It's just a healthier way to do it, if that makes sense. I think you guys should really listen to the, I know I mentioned it, but you should really listen to the song, The War by S-Y-M-L. 
it just so accurately describes what your person your masculine or your feminine is feeling right now or what they've been feeling and what they're coming out of um just the emotion behind the song and the lyrics if you really pay attention to the lyrics i feel like it just it so accurately describes this group you know one of the lyrics that's sticking out is you know be my shelter from the storm my war is over i am a sad boy um that's just that's really because i was interesting because i was just talking about like the war internally that they were going through and it's like he's saying like my war is over but did i sabotage myself too much did i did i dig myself into a hole that i can't get out of now did i push way too many friends and you know potential lovers away like do i really still have the chance to get out of this energy and to come forward um so yeah you are on their mind you definitely are they are thinking about you they might be another fire sign too because i kind of see you coming into this energy or i kind of see them coming into this energy this like three of wands and then eight of wands energy it's like action vitality just passion just moving forward you know especially with the sun card here too it's just it's it's moving forward in a really passionate way it's like really going through this like death and rebirth process pretty much where they just they found themselves and they they're taking responsibility for themselves finally and they're realizing how much they messed up with you and probably other people too i really don't feel like it's just you i think that there's probably friends and family members that they pushed away because they just i don't know they just they went through a phase of self-sabotage i think and so they're coming out of that I do sense, I, they might message you, I do sense that, I sense the desire there to message you, I do sense some, like, hesitation, because if it's been a while since you guys have talked, I think that they might be afraid that you'll just ignore them, or you'll reject them, or you're gonna tell them to go F themselves, because they screwed up too much, and they ghosted you, and, you know, you've probably moved on by now, so that kind of goes through their head, it's kind of like, it's almost it's like this bittersweet nostalgic energy it's almost like they get like emotional maybe even drunk and they like they want to message you and they stop themselves they're like okay what if is he or she gonna like take me back or are they gonna talk to me like how do i make them understand that like they didn't deserve that they deserve so much more than that um so they kind of like they're not they're not fighting with themselves as much about like between like commitment and and between you know of soul and mind like i was saying you know it's like they they have that deep desire for love but then they fight themselves because of the their fear and insecurities and the things that they've been through that have given the, them these commitment issues um and i feel like they're realizing they're ha they have to be vulnerable i think they realize they're getting older too and it's like they don't want to just spend their lives alone they don't want to be alone it's almost like that loneliness and that loss and that pain got so intense that it's like they just they don't they the commitment doesn't scare them quite as much as it did before because of that you know because the, the loneliness was worse i think there's a there's a quote that i heard from someone that i really like it's um the fear of loss has to be greater than the fear of commitment and i think that's what happened in this case the fear of loss is now greater than the fear of commitment at this point so so yeah they are wanting to reach out they are wanting to message um just kind of again still still fighting themselves on it so let's pull some more cards and see what else we can get i want to see if i can look into if they're going to message i mean it's, it's gonna it's gonna vary for each person you know what i mean and energy already always changes so your person could be planning on messaging right now in like not do it you know and just fight themselves and not do it and then there's somebody else on this video who maybe your person at this point is like not planning on reaching out like and they're just they're too scared and maybe you know they're gonna get drunk in a few hours and they're gonna be like you know what i gotta just push myself and do it because i do sense like bold action coming in like they're gonna they might just get to that point where it's kind of spontaneous where they're like you know what it's time to talk to this person like it's time to 
But they're scared, you know, they're really scared, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's see. So I do not intend on reading any of these cards upside down, but I have to reorganize them. So if they come upside down, I'm going to put that intention out into the universe already that I'm going to um, put them right side up. So yeah, message High Priestess of Spirit. They're wanting to me message their person, their, their High Priestess of Spirit, you know, this intuitive woman, this spiritual woman. They're wanting to send that message. They're realizing how important she is. Or he is, you know, whatever your story is. Okay, so are they going to message? Are they going to reach out? What's going to happen with that? What is the likelihood of them sending a message? What is the likelihood of them sending a message in the near future? We've got lust, hope, strength, honesty. See, to me, because a lot of times I always intuitively read the messages. To me, this kind of feels like passion here. It's kind of like, it's kind of what I was saying a minute ago where I was like, you know, they might get drunk and they might message you. You see, it's like, look at him. He's just giving in to her. He's, She's kissing his neck. She's putting, she's, you know, she's got her hands right here on his chest and he's not fighting her. He's not shutting her out. He's, look how vulnerable he is. He's, he's pulling his head back. He's letting her in. He's letting her take charge. He's, he's letting this person in or she's letting this person in. There's, there, it's mutual vulnerability here, really. So I, I do think that, yeah, they might get, they, you might get, if this person drinks, they might, they might send a drunk text. There might just be this passionate moment or just the nostalgia might get to that point where they, they just kind of push themselves to message. But it's, again, it's going to depend on what your situation is. Um, I never want to encourage people to wait for people. If you've been waiting for months and months and you've had no contact, then I, I, at that point, and I've been in that situation, I know it's hard, but at that point, I kind of encourage people to, you know, hold space for your person if this is your true love, but also keep your options open because you don't want to waste your life waiting for somebody. But um, but for this group, I do, I sense a lot of just bittersweet, nostalgic, just loving, mutually loving energy. So it, it is a really good reading. Yeah, I love that I got hope, strength, and honesty that this this together does give me hope for you guys definitely they could even be thinking about the past and thinking like you know what like this person loved me this person understood me they they knew the bad they knew all the good all the bad about me and they still wanted me they still loved me so maybe this is true love maybe there is hope here maybe that maybe i can be vulnerable with this person maybe it is safe for me to be vulnerable with this person you know like they have hope um they do that just like I said it's just like this bittersweet nostalgic energy like maybe listening to music that reminds them of you or it's just this raw emotion you know what I mean like you, you guys kind of know that energy it's like when you're like drinking and you're just listening to to your sad music or your um you know you're just like in bed and you're just thinking about some someone like you're just in that you're listening to the to the sad love songs. It's like kind of in that zone is is where your person is as at. I feel right now. So they are giving into this passion. They are being vulnerable. They are trying to open themselves up, even though it's really scary for them. And they do still have the commitment issues. It's not like they just go away overnight. But I think they're they're not. I don't, I don't think they're making excuses for their commitment issues anymore. You know what I mean? I think that they they realize that it's not okay anymore. I, I, I do. I think that. So, so yeah, they do have hope and they're going to try to be strong. They're going to try to just make some courageous action. And again, it could be spontaneous and they're going to try to come in and, and be honest with you because they probably know, I think that's probably part of why you, maybe you haven't gotten a message yet is because when they do want a message, they're like, well, what the, what am I going to say? Like, hi, how are you? Sorry. I haven't talked to you in six months. You know, like, what are they going to say to you? Huh. 
or however long it's been, you know, it, it's kind of like, what do they say? They're, they're just kind of thinking about what to say. What are they going to say that you're not just going to tell them to F off or just ignore them? Like, what are they going to say that, and also, what are they going to say that doesn't sound like they're making excuses? If they say, hey, you know, I was going through this and this and I pushed everyone away, they might be worried that saying that might sound like they're just making excuses for their behavior. Um, but so, yeah, they're trying to find, figure out a way to, to just come in honestly and just tell you how they feel, but they want to word it right. They're really, they're really thinking about how they're going to word this, but at a certain point, cause I think they're tired of that war inside themselves. You know, I think they really are sick of that. So at a certain point, you might just get a spontaneous message where they're like, you know what, screw it. I just have to step out of my comfort zone and I just have to do it. I have to stop worrying about how it sounds, if it's this, if it's that. Like at a certain point, they might just, you know, get drunk and just message you because they just, they don't want to be away from you. So it's really good energy. Let me see if I can get any final messages really quick. <laughs> So what's going on in like the astral realm telepathically? What's going on with this connection? What do we need to know about this connection? What do we need to know about this connection? Okay, yeah, it's really good. It's very good energy. I always have to, like, intuitively figure out the order to put them in. <laughs> to, like, take a second, look at them. Okay. So basically, you know, they, they did need to rest for a while. Like I said, they needed to retreat from the world for a while. They were too busy, just running on empty, just just in pain from what they had been through in their lives. And they needed to to um, retreat. And, you know, there was this period of deception where they're, they're... I mean, it could be lies, gossip, negative intentions. But for the most part, I think it's just saying deception is in, like, see, this moon is hiding. It's like it's hiding their, themselves from you. It's like kind of just wearing a mask, not being fully forward, not being their true selves with you. But they see you as this high priestess. They see you as like this very motherly, loving, empathetic woman. Doesn't necessarily have to be an older woman, but just somebody who has that motherly type energy, somebody who's empathetic, caring, loving. Um, you know, there is a deep psychic bond here. You guys have been and probably are currently in telepathic communication. And there is this energy shift that I you know, was talking about, this breakthrough, this it's quick change. It's like this energy is coming in quickly for them and for you, I feel. And it's just, it's intense, sudden change. It's just this breakthrough. It's them having these epiphanies about you, about the connection, realizing how much they screwed things up with you. They might have a spirit, they, you or them or both of you might have um, a spirit, like someone on the other side, like a, an ancestor or somebody that's kind of like connecting you guys, it's leading you guys together. And with sacred place here, it's it's feeling at home. It's it's basically they feel at home with you. This could also be referencing a specific place. So nostalgic memories and emotion that are connected to a specific place. Like if there's like a club you guys went to, or um, you know, a park or just wherever it might be. There might be some memories there that they're like revisiting. Like they're thinking about that place with you. They're thinking about the things that were said there, or maybe they're like actually going to that place and it's making them think about you, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's pretty good energy, I would say. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if it resonates, please go ahead and subscribe.